Hi, I'm Jeff Frey, your host for Economic Outlook. We're glad you've joined us. If you're a regular viewer, welcome back. If you're new, we hope you make plans to join us each week as we bring you stories about the people and the companies and the communities driving economic growth in our region. From accounting to welding and everything in between, Ivy Tech Community College is preparing thousands of students each year for their place in the workforce. We'll sit down with the new Ivy Tech South Bend Chancellor David Balkan to find out what's new on campus and what the future holds coming up on Economic Outlook. Employers are in a constant search for the employees they need with the right skill set to help their companies thrive. For over 50 years, the South Bend Elkhart campus of Ivy Tech has been giving those workers the skills they need by offering a wide variety of curriculums that include fields like information technology, advanced manufacturing, engineering, business, logistics, supply chain, and health services. The role of the college continues to evolve as the needs of the workforce and the companies driving economic growth continue to change. Joining me today for a conversation about preparing today and tomorrow's workers is the new Ivy Tech South Bend Elkhart Chancellor, David Balkan. David, welcome to our show today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so you've been on the show a couple, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, you've been on, in the job now a couple months. And yeah. so uh, um, and so, uh, tell us a little bit, those who haven't had a chance to meet you, tell, give us a little bit of uh, your background and experience. Yeah, so <clears throat> actually I, I'm a triple domer for people who are familiar with that in the region. I went to Notre Dame and uh, all my degrees are in engineering. I uh, had a great opportunity to continuously return to Notre Dame after going into the workforce and uh, my, my terminal degree, my PhD in metallurgical engineering and material science was actually supported by IBM. Uh, they sent me back in a graduate resident study program which was a great opportunity to have them foot the bill. And uh, my wife and I came with one son. My wife was seven months pregnant with our second and we ended up uh, returning back to IBM after it was done with four kids. So it was a, a very reproductive, if not productive time for us. Great, helping us grow population here. Exactly. We, we like that, we talk a lot about that. So, so you spent some um, time at, at Notre Dame, at, at, at somewhere along the way, this Ivy Tech um, opportunity pops up. What excites you about, uh, what excited you about that opportunity made you want to apply? Well, frankly, about six or seven months ago, I uh, had the opportunity to read the biography of the valedictorian at Notre Dame and uh, candidly it was an inspiring story showing how much somebody can do when they decide to invest their time and energy in something that's going to be impactful and uh, having gone to Notre Dame, having worked at Notre Dame for five years, having been in industry most of my career, I, I started to realize that there were very few things that I did that had the ability to have a direct impact on people and uh, candidly that's what got me excited about the Ivy Tech opportunity, realizing that I could have an influence that would be well beyond you know my my immediate reach. Great. So so as you're navigating a a, a lengthy uh, uh, search process, what what were uh, either observations you had about Ivy Tech before you got there, or things that people were telling you as you were uh, about the college as you were navigating? Well, frankly, I was familiar with Ivy Tech, having gone to Notre Dame and having spent some time in in the community, and to be frank. You know, my, my understanding was probably tainted by what you hear by, from people on the streets and various things that weren't necessarily reflective of, of the facts. And as I started to go through the interview process, I really got excited to see the impact that Ivy Tech has had and the opportunity it has in the future. Um, oftentimes people will immediately think of the Ivy Tech of 20, 30 years ago that was focused on continuing technical education and you know more more uh, workforce skills that are more um, you know hands-on work type stuff and uh, I didn't really have an appreciation of the fact that we have an extensive two-year associate's degree program we provide certificates technical certificates uh, we have just an amazing breadth of opportunities. Again, if you want to do CTE, it could be anything from automotive to HVAC to dental hygiene to machine tools. But um, again, to, to recognize that we also have a tremendously strong curriculum that allows people to graduate with an associate's degree 
and then transfer to the IU or the Purdue system. And we have articulation agreements with six other schools. So uh, again, it's a great leaping off point. I mean, obviously it can be a great terminal degree also to get an associate's degree. Um, our, our graduates are in high demand, but uh, you know, the more I investigated, the more I had this appreciation for the value that it provides, especially after having sent four of my kids to private school. Great. You know, it's, it's such an important uh, piece for employers. Uh, WNIT, for example, is a, uh, this show uh, doesn't uh, happen without Ivy Tech students that help us uh, put everything together. We're, we're really grateful, and they integrated uh, through the station, so we're seeing good, good product uh, that, uh, or good people that are coming well, from school. You know, the other there, interesting so. thing about it is the uh, past couple of weeks, I've had the opportunity to go to a couple of culinary events in the area. There was a chili cook-off and something else over at the Palais Royale. And uh, if you walk around and you talk to the chefs and the executive chefs and the people working, Ivy Tech has had a tremendous impact on the culinary environment here. And you know, I think we probably had 70 to 80 percent of the participants were Ivy Tech grads or affiliates. You know, they could have been adjuncts or they could have mm -hmm. been students. Um, and then, you know, at, at both events, it's just it's just impressive to see the, the reach that we've had. Right, you know, and, and I, I think of that reach now, 50 plus years in the community, really preparing students for that. So, so for folks who haven't been there, for give, give us a little feel for uh, maybe the campuses, the jurisdiction, somebody who hasn't been there, what, what, will, what would they see and feel if they sort of walked onto Elkhart or South Bend's campus? Well, um, hopefully they, they come and visit sooner rather than later. Uh, the South Bend Elkhart campus is actually responsible for St. Joseph County, uh, Marshall County, and Elkhart County. And we have a, a breadth of capabilities. You know, you can get over 150 certificates or degrees. And consequently, um, you know, if for example you're interested in nursing, you know, we have one of the best nursing programs, whether you want to get a uh, become a certified nursing assistant, uh, an LPN, or an RN. Um, we have just great facilities and actually our, our graduates test, you know, taking their T's when they graduate, they, they test above the, the state average. So, um, you know, it's one strong program that actually has a nursing facility and you go upstairs, it looks like a hospital ward and you can wander through and, and just see, you know, all the, all the equipment and the facilities that really are unparalleled. Same thing, dental hygiene, if you wanted to go in, we've got you know, 10 dentist chairs effectively lined up and it looks like a, a super dentist office. Um, HVAC, we got tremendous facilities, auto tech, number of bays, um, you know, machine tools, we, we have phenomenal equipment sets there. So again, the, the goal here is to be able to ensure that when somebody comes in, hopefully we can whet their interest, whet their appetite for for advanced education by showing them that you can do a breadth of things. And this, this even applies for, for students that are focused on getting an associate's degree. Um, you know, having been an engineer, I can tell you that the best engineers when I was going to school were the ones who had hands-on experience. You know, ones who worked on their parents' farms, repaired equipment, participated in auto tech, did some machine tooling, ran their father's tools, and they, they had an automatic interest and bent towards trying to figure out how to apply everything they were learning. I didn't have that advantage mm -hmm. and quite frankly I missed it. It's probably part of the reason why I kept going back for more degrees, mm -hmm. you know, to, to build up my confidence that right. I could compete. Yep, no, so so some excited. So t talk about balancing the, so, so as I look at the the offerings, you have a hundred plus programs there. How do you balance sort of the um, can't be all things to all people, but want to provide you know quality programming for what employers need. Um, talk about how you balance some of that. So, we have curriculum that's defined by our systems office down in Indianapolis. As you know, Ivy Tech, South Bend, Elkhart is one of 18 campuses, and we're part of the largest singly accredited college, community college in the country. Um, so. At the core, to have a standard curriculum is invaluable, especially as people move around the state and they can potentially take whatever level of curriculum they've completed with them. Um, but to that end, your point about customization, one of the things that we're really interested in doing is working closely with the local employers to ensure that the curriculum we have is applicable to what they want. So to that end, we're in the process of taking our curriculum and, and almost making product sheets with it where we basically are able to go in and say, look, 
you know, we think these four programs are pertinent to what you do. What we'd like you to do is review it, critique it, tell us whether or not we're missing things. But at the end of the day, when you agree that this is the curriculum that we should be pursuing, I want to put your logo on the back so our students, when they see the curriculum, they can flip it and say, I have the potential of working here, here, here. And um, again, you know, with a statewide curriculum, yeah, there's, there's core courses, but the beautiful part is we have the ability to customize a certain percentage of every curriculum with things that are going to be pertinent to the, to the local region. I, I think that's exciting, especially when you think about um, how quick things are changing in, in, in the private sector and businesses. For you to um, have that adaptability, I think, is, is really exciting. Well, additionally, I want to highlight that we do technical certificates, and we work with a lot of industry partners to effectively educate their current employees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the idea that somebody's a traditional student, you know, frankly, I think the average age of our students is between 26 and 27 years old. So a lot of them are in the workplace, they're working, and what we're hoping to do is to be able to skill them up a little bit. Uh, oftentimes we have employers come to us and say, hey, you, you know, many of our students have taken this level of curriculum or they've achieved this certificate. All of our certificates are stackable. And that's a huge advantage when somebody is trying to figure out how best to make their next move in, in the work world. We're starting to talk about employer interface a little bit, and, and I just want to sort of maybe walk through this process a little bit. So, if, is, so let's say one of these employers, a small manufacturer, is sitting at home today, watching the show, hasn't been plugged in uh, to Ivy Tech, is thinking about how do I skill up my workers and stuff. Help us understand um, what they should do. So we actually have a, a workforce team that engages with the local employers and you know to call into Ivy Tech and ask to be connected to our, our workforce team w would be a great first step but to those uh, to that end what we're typically doing is being very proactive already we're, we're reaching out and I'd be surprised frankly if there wasn't any employer in in our region that isn't familiar with the fact that we're more than willing to try to identify customizable programs to satisfy their their specific needs Great. Good. Uh, so let's switch maybe to the student side a little bit and, and, and let's talk about your students. You mentioned that the maybe the average student age, but, but again, I'm thinking if, if, uh, if, if students are, young students are at home and not unsure what to do, or if there are folks in the workforce who are thinking about, I'd like to do something different than I'm doing today, talk a little bit about just sort of a path they might follow to, to, to get connected or help understand what options might be available to them. Well, they can stop into Ivy Tech at any time. We have a number of advisors that are ready to assist anybody and everybody who expresses any level of interest. There's online applications. Our, our website, our Ivy Tech website, is a source of great information, provides detail about all the programs that we have. Um, I'd strongly suggest that somebody start at the website just to kind of get a flavor for what they might be interested in. And then our advising team, our enrollment team, can help somebody understand exactly what the process is. And we'll step them through everything from what it means to, you know, register, you know, apply for financial aid. Um, we have an advisor system that basically requires that the advisor define a completion plan for each student. So historically, community college have, have had a bad reputation uh, primarily because oftentimes students would enter without a definitive idea of what they were trying to do or how they were trying to, you know, finish a, a program. And, um, you know, as a result, they'd oftentimes take up to 30 credits more on average, like in California, it was 30 credits more to complete their associate's degree than, than what was actually required. So recognizing that, what we're very focused on doing is helping students understand exactly what the opportunities are, helping them to define a very definitive plan, and, and it will have, you know, the opportunity for them to, you know, take some electives. But, um, you know, again, with, with a clientele that's primarily 26, 27 years old on average, you know, there are quite a few that have a good handle on having some work experience, what they'd like to do next. With that said, you know, we also do have a lot of traditional students, and I'd be remiss not to talk to the fact that, um, you know, if they do decide to become a trade expert, obviously we have the CTE programs, but if they're not sure and they want to start into a pre-professional associate's degree program, uh, we have accelerated programs. We have an ASAP program where someone can get an associate's degree in 11 months that allows them to transfer to the IU system or Purdue or some of the other schools that we have articulation agreements with. We also have TSAP programs. We have 15 TSAPs that effectively 
our curriculum that would allow someone to say in chemistry start at, at um, Ivy Tech, get their two-year degree and then transfer to IUSB for example and get a four-year degree in chemistry. So again, very cost-effective, time-efficient way of being able to identify how best to move forward. Great, and, and so many are, uh, actually will follow several paths. Some of them will, will continue their education, some of them will go back to the workforce, some of them will do this for a, a promotion. You kind of have a lot of different paths and your, your folks will help them figure out that right Right, path. so our, our goal again is to intersect people where they're at. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the challenges we have is, you know, life gets in the way and we, we understand that. But we also have wraparound services where we're trying to figure out how best to join our students at the hip and ensure that they're aware that you know we have everything from a, a food pantry to referral service for mental health. You know, we're interested in helping build up the workforce, build up our local community, and we do have the resources to help them figure out how to how to survive some some of life's issues and how to ideally you know stay in school. Uh, ultimately, we're in the business of changing the trajectory of lives. A lot of the students that come, you know, maybe they're not sure what they want to do, and, and we can point them in a direction that will provide them infinite opportunities. And, and that's what I'm most excited about, you know, to be able to open the eyes of our students to the fact that, look, even starting at Ivy Tech, you have this potential to go to four-year school, you could go on to graduate school, you could do a bunch of things. We have a lot of Ivy Tech grads who ultimately went to IU. They're now in grad school at, at Notre Dame. I've had discussions with the provost at Notre Dame about actually starting a scholarship that's now partially funded for um, Ivy Tech graduates to go to Notre Dame for their four-year degree. So again, you know, not saying we have an articulation agreement in place, but it just kind of highlights the fact that people recognize that Oftentimes, people are coming to Ivy Tech because they didn't have the background or the family connections or the mentoring or the stewardship that maybe you and I had growing up. Yep. No, I, I think that's great, and you're really, I hear terrific things from the workforce. We have great experiences here, for example, from, uh, from Ivy Tech students, and our employers are, are saying the same thing. Um, I, I, as we start to wind down a little bit, um, uh, an exciting announcement out of Elkhart uh, regarding the iFlex labs. And, and so earlier in the season, we had the Notre Dame research team talking a little bit about Lyft and the Lyft grant that was coming to our area. I know an exciting announcement on the Elkhart campus. Can you tell us a little bit more about the iFlex lab, what that is, and how that's going to benefit the community? Definitely. So um, the iFlex lab is going to be an advanced manufacturing, advanced automation facility that we're building on our Elkhart location. And uh, you know we're blessed by being associated with Notre Dame on this grant. Um, they wrote us, to, wrote us in to include about a million dollars that's actually going to go to the build of our iFlex facility, which would be about a 10,000 square foot facility, again located right on the, on the current Elkhart location. Um, and the purpose of it is to effectively advance our abilities in mechatronics and advanced manufacturing and automation. Um, ultimately, we recognize the fact that currently our region is one of the largest manufacturing hubs in the country. We want it to be the advanced manufacturing hub in the country. And to that end, there's a lot of employers in the area who are starting to automate. And let me tell you, automation is the path of the future. And it's a tremendous opportunity for all of us, all the students. People worry, oh, it's going to reduce the number of jobs. It'll increase the number of jobs. You know, I think the vision that we have to have for the area is to leverage automation as the next big industry for our, our, local, our, our local region. So for example, oftentimes people say, well, you can't automate RVs. Well, you can automate RVs. And, Again, with 700 manufacturers, many of them supporting that industry and other industries, the idea of being able to say that if we can start automating, rather than just focus on automating the RV or the mobility industry, the industry that should be forced to move here is the automation industry. Mm -hmm. And then focus on the fact that we have automation capabilities here that will draw in other industries and other companies that might not be in the RV industry, right? So, that's how you basically build an economy. There's got to be some inorganic growth. We've got to be able to figure out how to bring in some skills that are going to be here anyways. You know, mm -hmm. some of the local manufacturers have contracts for three years with automation companies to come on site and help them. Have them move here. You know, have them recognize the value of being in this space, in this state that has, 
you know, some of the best business regulation, you know, mm -hmm. s you know, environments in the world and, um, you know, help us cultivate a, a strong workforce that can support advanced automation and, and uh, advanced manufacturing. Pretty exciting uh, place and actually, obviously they uh, picked a great spot, I think, it, with the highest concentration of manufacturing of about any county in the country. Kiplinger um, talked about um, the, per capita the number of robots uh, uh, per people and, and so some things going in the right direction. Glad Ivy Tech's in the middle of that. What kind of time frame associated with, uh, um, with the uh, iFlex lab coming off the ground and, and being ready to go? So um, we're at the very early stages and in fact we're um, you know, going through the final approvals. Uh, I think we, we still have to uh, have, um, you know, our, our design completed. Um, we met with, you know, a design team and some of the manufacturers that will be helping to do general construction activity with us uh, just yesterday. And um, ultimately, uh, we hope to put shovel to soil probably in the April, May t time frame. And again, the goal is to have it probably functional by 2021. And to that end, we're in the process now of defining an advanced set of curriculum. You know, you asked about mm -hmm. what's unique. Uh, what we're going to do is work much more closely with local industry to help ensure that what we're defining as, you know, the value added curriculum is going to be up and running and in practice even before the doors open. Great, well pretty exciting, great story. I'm glad you're there and uh, we look forward to working with you as you continue. Thanks for uh, helping our uh, audience under better understand what's going on. Uh, it's a real community treasure. We're glad it's here and we're glad you're part of the leadership team. Thank you. Great. That's it for our show today. Thank you for watching. To watch this episode again or any of our past episodes, you can find Economic Outlook at WNIT.org. We also encourage you to like us on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. I'm Jeff Ray, I'll see you next week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.